Hello everyone, how are you today? I am Dr. Paramjeet and you are watching Dr. Education. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, I make videos about health and healthcare topics and today I am going to talk about the most important topic of this time, dengue. Dengue, dengue, whatever you call it. Dengue fever is one of the most dangerous and most commonly found problems in every other home these days every year every year hospitals are filled with dengue patients so that's why knowing about this problem is very important so today we are going to talk about what causes dengue how can you diagnose it and does it actually cause so many problems do you really need to get admitted and how can you treat it at home how can you treat it in the hospital right when do you have to worry and what are the preventive measures? So let's start with dengue. The internet is full of bro science, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. So guys, dengue fever is a topical fever which is caused by a virus which is carried by mosquitoes obviously the virus basically they can cause fever headache rash there are many symptoms which we will talk about in a moment but you need to understand that most cases of dengue fever are actually very mild and they go away on their own without even diagnosis without even anything any treatment in about one week Dengue is caused by four similar viruses. This all are spread by mosquitoes and they are from the genes of Aedes, right? Most commonly by Aedes aegypti, right? This is most common in countries and areas where it is basically tropical or subtropical areas worldwide, right? So what happens? When an Aedes mosquito bites a person who has been infected with the dengue virus, so person, so if a person has dengue virus infection and an Aedes mosquito comes and bites this person, this mosquito now becomes a carrier of the virus. And this mosquito now will bite someone else and that person can be infected with the dengue virus. Not necessarily, can be. This virus cannot spread from person to person, right? As I said, most people, they have a very mild disease. But in rare cases, dengue fever can lead to a more serious form of disease called dengue hemorrhagic fever. And this can be a life-threatening situation which needs treatment right away, right? So what are the signs? What are the symptoms, right? How can you know if you have dengue? So dengue fever begins with a sudden high fever, often as high as 105, 105 degree Fahrenheit, 40.5 degree Celsius fever, which happens four to seven days after the infection, right? Then a flat red rash may appear most of the body two to five days after the viral fever starts and a second rash, which looks like exactly like measles can appear later in the disease right this infected people may have increased skin sensitivity which is very very uncomfortable right so what else can happen people can have fatigue then headache especially behind the eyes headache behind the eyes joint pain joint pains very very severe joint pain muscle pains very severe muscle pains nausea, vomiting, they can have swollen lymph nodes, sometimes they can have cough and even sore throat, nasal stuffiness, right? And when we talk about children, symptoms of dengue fever are generally mild in young children and for those who have the disease for the first time, it's also mild, right? Older kids, adults, they can have, uh, one who, and those who have older kids and adults, and those who have had a previous infection may have a moderate to severe disease symptoms, right? And all these symptoms can occur uh, in children also, fever, headache, joint pains, right, rash. Then sometimes bleeding can also occur from the nose or the gums, right? Easy bruisability, you might bruise easily, 
in dengue. So all these symptoms are there which you need to look for. And this fever is called brick bone fever. Right? Why it is called like this? Because the pain in this fever, the pain in the bone, the pain in the muscles is so severe that this that this fever is actually called break bone fever because of the intense pain. Right? But be assured there isn't actual breaking of the bones, but it just feels like that it's so much pain. So how long does this dengue fever last? The symptoms start anywhere from four days to two weeks after being bitten by an infected mosquito. Symptoms typically last for two to seven days, right? But sometimes the problem can increase after the fever decreases, right? Symptoms can get worse and they may cause more severe bleeding, gastric, gastrointestinal problems like nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, respiratory problem, difficulty in breathing, dehydration can occur, heavy bleeding can occur and a rapid drop of blood pressure, right? Person can go in shock and this all can happen because of dengue hemorrhagic fever, right? This happened in some people, not everybody, but when this happens, it can be life threatening, right? And these symptoms therefore need immediate medical attention should be, should be admitted to a hospital, right? But not everybody who has fever, if you have all these symptoms, right? So someone who has had the illness becomes immune to that particular type of virus, but still it can be infected by any other three types of viruses still in future. So that's the idea. Okay. There are four types of virus. How dengue can be diagnosed? Then that's the question. See, tests that may be done to diagnose include one is an antibody titer for dengue virus types, right? Dengue NS1, antigen, etc., etc. are also done. Blood counts are done, complete blood counts. Then PCR, polymerized chain reaction, can be done for specific dengue virus types. And liver function tests are done to check if there is any damage to the liver and if, in case there is a bleeding problem associated. Right. So if you think that you or your child have a dengue fever, call your doctor right away. Your doctor will do the necessary tests and will see if your fever needs any further evaluation. All right. How is dengue fever treated? There is no specific treatment available for dengue fever. Mild cases are managed with simple fluids, a lot of fluids to prevent dehydration and getting plenty of rest is important. Right. Rest is the must. Rest is must and fluid is best. Mild cases are managed with fluid, simple fluids, lots of fluids. This is to prevent dehydration. And the second most important thing is rest. Plenty of rest is important. For the intense pain in dengue, avoid taking painkillers with paracetamol or acetaminophen. Right. And you can, you should also avoid aspirin, brufin and other NSAIDs because they can make the bleeding tendency more likely, right? So talk to your doctor for what you can take, what alternative you can do. Most cases of dengue fever go away within a week or two and won't cause any lasting problems. Yes. But if someone has a severe symptom of dengue or if someone gets worse in the first day or two after the fever goes away, right? After the fever goes away and you become worse, then seek medical attention immediately because you might be going into dengue hemorrhagic fever. This could be the problem. So to treat severe cases of dengue, we have to admit the people. So to treat a severe case of dengue, we have to admit the person in a hospital and we start them with IV fluids, right? And electrolytes, basically salts to replace the salts which are lost through vomiting or diarrhea, right? Dehydration has to be corrected. When started early, these actual treatments corrected. If you actually start this treatment early, this is enough to actually effectively treat the disease. Only fluids and electrolytes, right? In more severe advanced cases, then because of the bleeding, because of the you know, blood loss, you have to give blood transfusion. 
if you are bleeding obviously bleeding tendencies because sometimes dengue hemorrhagic fever have internal bleeding so internal bleeding can lead to blood loss and therefore blood transfusion may be needed but in all cases of dengue infection effort should be made to keep the infected person from being bitten by a mosquito because this will help prevent the illness from spreading to others that is important because once you are bitten by 10 mosquitoes, all these 10 mosquitoes will get carriers and they will infect everybody around. So make sure of that. So how can you prevent this? Because there is no vaccine. There is no vaccine to prevent dengue. The best protection is to prevent bites from an infected mosquito. So be sure to use screens on the doors and windows, right? Uh, mosquito repellents. And keep your doors and windows closed, right? Have your kids wear long sleeved shirts. Wear, everyone should wear long sleeves, shirts, long pants and shoes and socks. Whenever they go out and use mosquito nettings over the beds at night or around their room in the windows, right? Use insect repellents, right? You can use insect repellents for your kids also and or their beds around there choose choose one with d double e t deet or oil of lemon eucalyptus they are good for kids right and limit the amount of time a kid spends outside during the day especially in the eyes especially in the hours around dawn to dusk these are this is the time where mosquitoes are most active right so don't give mosquitoes place to breed, right? They lay there. And the next important step is don't give mosquitoes place to breed. They lay their eggs in water. So get rid of all standing water in things like containers, discarded tires. Be sure to change the water in bird baths, dog bowls, right? And even flower vases at least once a week, right? Change the water. By taking these precautions and keeping your kids away from the areas that have dengue fever epidemic, like the risk of contracting dengue fever is very small, becomes very small. So make sure to follow all these steps. Dengue fever is one of the rising problems. Every year we face this issue. So obviously it's the responsibility of you and everybody, even the government needs to take initiative. Knowledge is very very important so that's what we are giving here please if you like the video then don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up and share this video with everyone because this is important this is very important right so i'm dr paramjit i'm a consultant physician and cardiologist in yashoda super speciality hospital nadunagar ncr you're watching doctor education stay connected to stay healthy